You're back with a single malt review. I'm Dave and this is Tim and this is some whiskey. It sure is. It's Spayburn but it's mm. not the normal one. Oh my goodness it's 18 years old. It's old enough to vote. Holy drink. moly. I Ironically. didn't know they made this old Spayburn in the normal range. This was a bit of a revelation to me. Um, the first of many. Mm. The second one was just how goddamn good it is. So I'm not going to waste any time here. It's Spayburn. You know what it is. They're in Rothis. Mm. Smack dab in maybe not the heart of Space side. They're a bit far north but um, they're in there for Sure, they're in the hot zone and have quietly been making whiskey for absolutely ages. They've been in production since 1897 um, and they're in the house at the moment, which are the, um, the Bob Blair and Old Pulteney people and probably one more that I've forgotten, but um, please remind me in the comments if you so wish. Uh, <clears throat> but today we're interested in Spayburn mm. and yeah, 18 is not, not a common number you see on bottles of Spayburn. Typically it's 10. The range has really mm. focused on that 10 and it's a great 10 year old. People always ask, um, you know, what are the alternative entry level teen age statements, but not mm. um, not as prescriptive as um, Glenn Fiddick? And I say, oh, you know, Glenn um, Glenn Morangy does a good one. And I always forget Spayburns out here mm. secretly, secretly doing a really cracking ten year old <laughs> in the same price point, more or less. Um, in between the rising cost of whiskey and the rising cost of living, eighteen year old Scotch is getting oof. increasingly inaccessible. Yeah. Um, for, some of for, it, well, a great many of us. Some of it has completely lost its mind. Some yeah. of it has. I mean, if this came from, say, Japan, um, we wouldn't, we would not be sitting here right mm -hmm. now, um, not with a full bottle anyway. Well, not that this is a full bottle, but not with a not with a full sized <laughs> bottle by yeah. any means. Um, yeah, let's let set about prices of mm -hmm. uh, whiskey with age statements. The better, but yeah. anyway. So we have bourbon and sherry cask contributing here, and it is a luscious colour. Yeah. It's like a. Um, um, if it is not amber ale, dark. If it is not um, evident, oh yeah, there's some there's some old old yeah. speckled hen right here, mm. a little bit stronger. Um, this is not your average Spayburn. Mm. Um, one because it's almost twice as old. Two because this is, as we're about to discover, a Dave whiskey. Oh yeah, this is sherry matured, and I mean mm. sherry matured. It might say bourbon and. Um, mm. Bourbon and uh, well, bur American, American implying and implying yeah. bourbon. Not that they don't make um, heck of um, mm. American oak sherry barrels these days. But anyway, this is through and through a sherry matured whiskey, and I think it's one of the very best ones out there. I think Dave is going to lose his top over this. Mm. Cinnamon, ginger, Oof. cloves yeah. already on the nose. It's really spicy on the nose, yeah. and then it does it. It does an inflection on the palate, which I really like. Because mm. it, it makes you think it's going to be one of these Christmas pudding. It makes you think it's going to be mm. a Glendronic, but it's not going to be a Glendronic. It does a there's a it mm. does some acrobatics on the palate. You get a little fragrant uh, wood chips as well. A bit of incense, a bit of potpourri. There is a bit of potpourri. There's some mm. sandalwood, yeah. which comes up a lot as a tasting note. But I think it's way more real here than it is in a lot of them. Mm. Wow. There's a huge amount of sweet spice. So there's allspice, yeah. clove, which you already clocked. There's a whole lot of cinnamon in here. Mm. Oh wow! These sort of stewed plums, oh. and there's a, just a there's a sweetness which is sweet without being cloying. The dog has just entered the room with a massive stick, so I'm just hoping that <laughs> that situation remains under control. That's fine. Apologies if you hear any crunching. She is feeling left out, but never mind. Um, mm. Yeah, really, oh, really, really I want sumptuous. These flavors in variously a cake and a stir fry. It's I say flavors. I mean these aromas. Yeah. But, it's wow. a real, um, it's a Chinese five spice mm. kind of a kind of a thing. It's the stir fry, yeah. the stir fry be good angle. In sweet or savory dishes. Yeah. So full strength mm. on the palate. Mm. And there's the trickery. Oh, that is gorgeous. That there is, is trickery. Actually stunning. You mm. think I, I've described this off camera, um, but I, I think it's the, the analogy holds true. This mm. is like a Glendronic without the goopiness. Mm. This is without that. That Glendronic sauce, which yeah. is largely, largely I attribute to their heavy, heavy use of PX, mm. um, which is just jolly raisin juice. So it's, <laughs> it's um, yeah. mm. uh, unsurprising that there's a, there's a sort of a saucy goop factor to um, oh. Glendronic, but it's got all of the richness of the Glendronic with none of mm. the austerity of the other big, the other big sherry, which is Glen yeah. which does a much drier, much sharper mm. kind of a buttoned up sherry matured whiskey. And it meets somewhere in the middle and there's just this big injection of vibrancy mm. as well. There is the fruity heat of a habanero pepper or one of those other chilies, the ones mm. which you can actually taste the fruit and not just the heat. Uh, it's 
it, it comes up immediately, but that passes through into this. Hmm. But I think it really timber, takes off. Beeswaxy leather, big comfy old couch. Yeah, leather's mm. a good one. But I think a little bit of water really makes this one sing because it's already quite juicy, but with a wee splash here. Oh, it's about ready to make me sing. God, this is yeah. good. It, with a bit of a splash, it can get very, very juicy, mm. very, very fast. And that's when I think it really takes off. Mm. Just there's a wee bit of separation there. There's some citrus there. on the nose. There's a bit of lemon yeah. and Well, it just, it just stretches the palate yeah. apart and suddenly things that were hiding, things that were underneath this big log of cinnamon and this big whack of clove are... Ooh. And that's that's why you water down your whiskey if you want to really, really taste yeah. it. It exposes those notes. Mm, there's a bit of lemon and passion fruit, hint of a, a freon, um, if you're into your gluten-free baking. Yeah, it is... So nimble oh. and so so rapid. It's a, like a like a, a ballerina of a whiskey on the yeah. tongue, considering how heavy it makes you think it's going to be. Because mm. you get that nose, all those Christmas cake spices, and you think this is just going to come oozing out of the glass um, and sort of flomp onto my tongue like mm -hmm. a like a vintage Glendronic. And nothing, no no shade against Glendronic. That's exactly why mm. that's exactly why we come to Glendronic and love it because it just really does it yes. does the cake whiskey in the way that that mm -hmm. makes Dave um, lose control. I've seen it. Um, but this one, this one makes you think that's going to happen, and then you get it on the palate, and it's just there's an agility to it. Mm. Um, I don't know whether this is because the, the 18 year old of this will be very very batch driven, so this mm -hmm. could be a complete outlier, and the your eight year uh, mm. 18 year old, not eight year old, 18 year old mm. experience could be um, markedly different because mm. um, we're definitely into the batch zone when it comes to sort of weirdo releases like this. Well, but which, which year's expression was this? Um, goodness, 23, right? Um, it was probably 23. It was very likely bottled in 23, but I'm not 100% right. sure. So, but it'll be recent for sure, mm. um, because it's it's the latest um, the latest branding yeah. livery which has been um, updated in the last few years. Well, if you're in any way inclined towards this style of whiskey, based on what we've said, absolutely go out and get it. But yeah, if you you're as um, much as you can, if you can get it, and yeah. it's, it's not common, and it's, it's I mean it's one of the more affordable 18 year old. But mm. the the these statement affordable and 18 um that's not a that's not a sentence anymore so mm -hmm. don't expect it to be cheap but it's certainly not going to go mad like a you know a japanese 18 or or something more exclusive from mm -hmm. um, the old country but um if you're a real if you're a sherry head um then it is i think mm. in the unmissable category oh, because yeah. it is for something so sherry dominant I think it really, really does something not 100% new, but it carves its own path through this the 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 sherry gauntlet of getting it right, and I think it gets it yeah. remarkably right, which is doubly strange because Speyburn is such a a well-known bourbon matured whiskey. It is one mm. of those whiskies which really, really loves bourbon maturation and is well known for it. Um, so to see a such a dominantly sherry matured one work so well mm. is very very surprising and very very um, pleasantly surprising too mm. scores mm. without going completely nuts this is 92 mm. this is just really really good sherry matured whiskey yeah. um, and that's and it's not even my thing I'm not I do not lose my mind over mm -hmm. sherry matured whiskey so that's a that is a very critical it level headed 92 to its restraint it's not to be all over the top bombast like an 18 year old Glendronic yeah if I was drinking 18 year old Glendronic there's always a hint of like this is this is really good and this is really mm -hmm. special for 18 but there's always just a for me not mm -hmm. being all the way in the sherry hole there's always the it's just slightly overwhelming slightly right. overloading like like someone's like you've been given too much pudding, you know. You're you're at a table somewhere, and oh no, and and oh, and they're putting ice cream on top too. How am I going to how am I going to do this? That's like there's a little bit of that feeling if I'm faced with, and it's a good problem to have too much Glendronic. Um, I don't think I've ever said too much Glendronic, and I don't think I ever will again. But um, there, oh no, actually there was one particular. There was one particular dinner where it came out in jugs, but um, never mind, never mind. That's what happens at the whiskey galore Christmas dinner. Um, often spills out onto the streets but never mind um 
this is this is really really quite tremendous. But I'm I'm less interested in my score as not a not a sherry nutcase. But from a sherry nutcase, mm. what is what is your take on this well, one? Well, I will be going um, slightly higher. This rates a ninety three for me. This is probably going to be a contender for my whiskey of the year. This is one of be one of the best I have tried this year. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, uh, it is. It has all the. It brings the sherry in the way I like so much, but it brings it in a different way. It just uh, it's not just the all out in your face a sherry bombast of a glendronic it has tempered in a way it's it's mediated moderated uh probably through the addition of the bourbon barrels and other differences in process and it's uh it's special it's its own wee beastie it's uh yeah a passion fruit free on in a glass with oodles of spice and other character as well it's just it does so much yeah, yeah it is it is really good and it's remarkably good as well mm. um just because it came out of nowhere as a mm. as a style um you imagine sort of the the sherry pantheon there's mm. this this churning battleground between the the big sherries sort of your mccallan's not you can bloody no you can afford sherry mature <laughs> mccallan anymore but mm. you know your mccallan and your glenfarclas and your glendronic and it's all this battle of the gods that's been going on since the dawn of people paying too much money for whiskey and then <laughs> this one just walks in and dunks mm. on the whole thing and walks out again um with um if not first place then then a very very strong um strong showing coming out of that um yeah surprising surprisingly delicious um it's always great when mm. something is surprisingly delicious so um i hope everyone is spraying surprisingly delicious there at home we will be back with something else it can't possibly be as good as this mm. but you know um damn it it's going to try slander <laughs> 